All right, we'll try that again. Now we have audio, so welcome. And uh, you missed the best opening of the service that we've ever done here at St. Peter's. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Please join me in our opening anthem, the Te Deum. In unison, you are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Deepen our devotion, O Lord, and use us in accordance with your will, that inspired by the example of your servant, Monica, we may bring others to knowledge to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Hannah was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow. O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, no, my Lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reciting Psalm 115. We'll go by half verse. Actually, we'll, we'll recite it together in unison. Together we say, the Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel he will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. May the Lord give you increase, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to human beings. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time on and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. 
Soon afterwards, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a loud crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the bier, and the bearers stood still, and he said, young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, a great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favorably on his people. This word about him spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. The gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We live in uh, pretty remarkable times, and one of the challenges that preachers face in remarkable times is the very fact that they're remarkable, and you're kind of expected to stitch all of these current things that are happening together in such a non-intrusive and non-offensive way, yet somehow find relevance within the context of the gospel so that people can gain some degree of elucidation and clarity in their thoughts as they struggle with what's happening in life around them and in themselves as they seek meaning, and at the same time to hold the standard of the gospel up so there is an incontrovertible word of grace and love from God, right? Easily done, not so much. And on top of that, in the context of this noonday Eucharist, um, I challenge myself as a preacher to keep it short and sweet. Um, there is a sermon, which is that piece of holding forth on a Sunday or on a major feast day that involves uh, a great deal of thought work and, and uh, you're giving a, a big, nice, well-formed dish to folks. There is that um, lighter meal of a homily where you're trying to distill that down. And then uh, as one of my old uh, homiletics teachers, one of my old preaching teachers taught me, there's the prone, which is that short, pithy phrase. How can you take all of the things that are being discussed and boil them down so that people can walk away from the altar, having been fed with the body of Christ and nourished with the word. So here's the prone. In light of the story of Hannah and her testimony of seeking a child that could carry her heritage forward and also be a recipient and a conduit of faith and grace that she is expressing to God, seeking that boon and that blessing and at the same time delivering it back as an offering. Here's the context of that psalm that gives us the challenge of seeking a blessing from God in meaning and context so that we can be not only relevant but present to the challenges that we face in the day. And then finally in the gospel, the story of the widow of Nain, in the context of which um, you should hear that when uh, a mother's only son and she was a widow dies, this woman's life was also over. Though she was going to continue living, everything that she had was on that beer that was going to the grave. All the trust that she had for safety, all that sense of economic independence, all that sense of protection in a world dominated by a patriarchy that put to the side the widow and the orphan and those deprived of the agency of male oversight. So here is the challenge of the day on top of the uh, sirens going by. Here's the challenge of the day. How do you bring that down and land that in the context of Monica, who is the mother of Augustine of Hippo, was the driving force of his conversion to Christianity. And by him being converted to Christianity as one of the early doctors of the church in the fourth century, we receive the clarity, not only of his confession, but also of his great summa called the city of God that lays out in very clear form what it means to follow and form a theology of a living God a, a, a savior who walks in our midst and a spirit that continues to form the church. And not only form the church, but also influence human society. Because we are not just called to be inhabitants and citizens of this world that we are transiting as members of the body of Christ. We are also called to be citizens of the polis, of the city, which means we contribute and participate in the political processes that create a common good. And here's the word, the prone that I offer you to you to walk forth from this place holding forth. It is not so much that we should see the end of the good that we intend, though it is important that sometimes we do get to see that. That's a blessing. It is not important for us to achieve an end because we don't know what that will look like 
And if we try to put an expectation upon it, the temptation is great to put our expectations on an outcome over and against what God purposes. We are called in God in Christ to simply do the next right thing. I am confident that, and we know this from the testimony of scripture, that Eli had no clue what he was giving to Hannah in his blessing because she was praying quietly with only her lips moving. And he, he assumed that she was drunk and trying to get over some personal crisis of the moment. And instead she was praying for the gift of a son who would eventually become the great prophet, the last judge and first great prophet of, of Israel. We did not and cannot assume that Jesus had some elaborate plan in place when he happened upon a funeral procession and modeled for us what it looks like to care for those in need when he took hold of a beer, touched a dead man, and embraced uncleanness so that the dead would rise and that life would be reasserted with a just relationship between a mother and a son being restored. We are called not so much to encompass and understand a grand strategy of activity, but rather as individuals, we are called simply and succinctly, prayerfully and faithfully to do the next right thing. When I was a young man and a younger priest, I had a bad day. And I went to my pastor and my boss and my mentor, and I explained to him my bad day with tears in my eyes and a broken heart in my chest. And he said to me, and there was a service just like this in about an hour, he said, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go and put on your best vestments. I don't care what day of the liturgical calendar it is. I don't care what the color required is. Just put on your best vestments. You're going to go down there and you're going to celebrate that Eucharist and you're going to rededicate yourself to your priesthood. That you can do. The rest can be a mess, but that you can do. And I did just that. And I went down and it was the worst Eucharist of my life. I messed up the prayers. I, I, I lost my place in my homily. I, I, I spilled wine. I dropped bread. I stumbled and bumbled my way through this horrible experience, sweating bullets and stressing the whole time with a broken heart and tears going down my face. And I found myself renewed, renewed at the conclusion of that service, not because it would have been good, not because God had intervened and everything worked out great, because it was a massive and regrettable train wreck of a worship experience. And yet at the same time, it was the next right thing the next right thing. And I talked about that not too long ago on Facebook. And a person said, reminds me of a 96 year old English lady. I knew her response to anything that was happening in her life that was not right. She said, get up, freshen up. There's your prone. Whether you want to choose to hang your hat on one or the other, do the next right thing. In the name of Christ. And if that fails, simply get up and freshen up and embrace the renewal that Christ offers you will have an opportunity to do that next right thing. And we can keep doing that until there is a kingdom of God here in this plane and in this moment. For now, we bear. We bear witness, we bear with, we bear the burden of the gospel. May we all be able to do the next right thing. Amen. My brother and sister, I invite you to stand if you are able or kneel if you wish, and we will offer prayers on behalf of the church and the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the way of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for the President of the United States, Congress, the Supreme Court, state legislatures, and all places where justice and truth and law are being forged. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly 
in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for Elizabeth, Rick, Christopher, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Anne-Marie, Rini, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Ahak and Joss family, Dylan, Kay, and Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Anne, Dora, Gary, Kay, Rob, Sonny, Shirley, Betty, Guy, Pete, Pat, Marge, Piper, Isla, William, Phil, Eddie, George, Virginia, Paul, Pat, Tom, AJ, and Brandon. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that, they may, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray for the repose of the soul of David, who passed away recently. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, what we have asked faithfully grant effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit live and reign now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace. God's peace. We continue with Eucharist. You can find that in your worship leaflets. And uh, I'll come down and offer the bread at the foot of the steps when it is time. So glad you're here. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Peter, our patron, blessed Monica and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring in this these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and to remain with you forever. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.